You should be able to see me. Hello! There we are. Welcome back to me, I see. Now, can you all hear me and see me? I hope you haven't pushed off, because we don't want that. So there you are. Remember, I will always make an attempt to come back to you, so give me a fair hearing. If you ever lose me at any point, then uh, give me a fair hearing, because I'll always do my best to come back to you. All right, very, very important. George Raffin's watching. Angie Thompson, Dave Hemsley. And uh, that is fantastic. Everybody building up again, our audience building up. Tremendous. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome to you. You are very welcome globally. Please put what country you're watching in so that we can actually find out what's what. Giuseppe Bacchetti is watching. Tremendous. John McDonough, you're back. Welcome. Hello from Paraguay. Isn't that tremendous? I love it. John is in Paraguay. He's lovely to have you from Paraguay. That's better, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. Did you actually lose me, Dave, or were you still able to see the backup program? That's what I'd like to know. Andy McCrory's watching. Tremendous stuff. Give me information, guy. Just love the technology, Captain, says George Raffin. Yes, but George, I'm not going to touch one of these see more things again. Because that can send the whole thing bananas, even a tiny, tiny finger touch, because the technology is so sensitive. Uh, but I love the technology as well. It's tremendous because it's bringing us all together. It's bringing the world together globally. And it's tremendous that we are together. And remember, if you ever think anybody is being racist, you cannot actually be racist because there is only one race. That's the human race. And we are all members, and everyone smiles in the same language. Very, very important there. Uh, George is back, back again since Phil Jones Hammersley. Yes, indeed, Phil. Did you actually lose me, or could you see me on a backup system? That's what I want to know. That's very important. Graham Badger, it just cut to the last few seconds of the broadcast. We're getting you now. Nicholas Sturgeon's clothing allowance, £80,000 a year, says so Sandy. Excellent money, very well spent. I just wonder what the others charge. Uh, it's probably a lot more, Sandy. So there you are. So Sandy, let's not be trying to cock a snook at our finest politician. Remember, your mob had their chance and they blew it big time. They are now wandering about in the wilderness and will probably remain in the wilderness for many, many moons to come because they haven't backed Scottish independence. They betrayed their roots. They betrayed the Scottish people. And that was the end of that. And the Scottish people do not like being betrayed. I've had enough of that. Uh, no, Scotty, you just went, no backup thingy kicked in. You'll have to update the old computer, Scotty. So, George, this is why I'm asking for GoFundMe, George. So if you go on to www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue, stick in a couple of quid, a fiver, somebody popped in a hundred pounds, which was wonderful. A lovely, lovely person popped in a hundred pounds. But uh, I would like to see that as a thousand pounds by the end of tonight. So if all of you can go to GoFundMe and give a pound, two pounds, whatever, I can make that go further. Think of the five loaves and two fishes. The feeding of the 5,000. Lost you, says Lynn Kay, but we're back. Uh, excellent stuff. The Scots are experts at betrayal, Scotty, says Sandy Howden. No, some of us have very, very high standards and would not betray our roots, Sandy. And also our founder's roots, Keir Hardy, R.B. Cunningham Graham. There we are, the man that went on to found the original SNP. Hi, Scotty, from the mobile flooring showroom in Shollins in Glasgow, says Derek McGonigal. Derek has a business of mobile flooring, and he will come to you. I like the idea of that. You should try and get Mark Zuckerberg to sponsor you, Captain, for all your business, says George Reffin. Absolutely, yes, a very good idea, George, and that may well be the case. I've already appealed principles only, please, because we don't want to waste... Uh, their time or my time, yes? My time is very, 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 very valuable. But remember this, yours is even more valuable. 
What about that? Hi, Scotty. Uh, you should. Uh, what have we got? Um, what have we got? For the people, Scotty says. See, Leslie. Yes, absolutely. For the people, very, very important. So there we are. Three little initials for the people, and this is the people's show, folks. Now, time is tramping on. Can we uh, share, 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 share? That would be marvellous if we could do that. Excellent. Thank you for that. And uh, the subjects of every state ought to contribute towards the support of the government as nearly as possible in proportion to their respective abilities. Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. Yes, Adam Smith. Buried, I think, if I remember rightly so, in the Canongate Kirkyard in Edinburgh, in the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. And I think Adam Smith from Kirkcaldy, from the Lang Toon, is buried there. And I've uh, got his Wealth of Nations book, a fine, fine piece of work. It is, absolutely. In those days, you talked about the subjects. I think it's very important. Scotland, Scotland needs to remember uh, when they go independent, they have to take the Queen and the Bible with them because these are stalwarts of this country. And remember, we Scots started the modern monarchy. Yes, our James the Sixth became James the First of uh, uh, England. What's the pin on your lapel, Scotty? Says Rudy. It's just a wee flower, Rudy. I'm very, very fond of it. A little forget-me-not, um, and I just like to have that there. And then I've also got my, my chain here uh, on the other side. Uh, so there you go, if I need to flush. Um, it's not the Lang Toon, it's the right Toon, says Celeste. Oh, Kirkcaldy's the Lang Toon, I'm absolutely sure. I'm sure Kirkcaldy's known as the Lang Toon. The Fifers will come on. Remember, if you're supping with the Fifers, you have to use a Lang Spoon. Right, um, a lang spoon in the lang tune. What about that? I don't know if you heard uh, the Tory MP on about Gibraltar, but it was worrying about Spain and Gibraltar. Yes, I wouldn't listen to any of that, George. There's a lot of hot air being talked at the moment. I would think the whole thing about Gibraltar, Spain would not be um, blocking or vetoing um, Scotland's entry into the EU. So don't listen to too much hot air. Say to yourself, who's saying this? Where is it coming from? And it's highly unlikely that they will have no agenda. Scotty McClure, that you're watching the new, right now, on Facebook Live, has got no agenda. We are just looking at the facts and having a chit chat. And that's what it's all about. Uh, Sandy Howden, they do not like the Queen, Scotty, you know that. Sandy, Everybody loves the Queen. The Queen costs us about 50 to 60p every year. It's an absolute bargain. And it's very, very important that uh, people wanting independence do not try and bring the crown into it, right? Once you meddle with the crown, you're absolutely finished. Take my word for it. Now, uh, that mistake was made by the nationalists in the uh, 1940s and 1950s. Don't make it again is my message to them, all right? Otherwise, independence gets kicked into the long grass. But leave the Crown and the Bible alone. Take them on board in a new independent Scotland and all will be well. So there you are, McClue has speak. Uh, George says you could get old Labour MPs um, and councillors on. They've got plenty of time now that they're unemployed, so they <laughs> get them on. Hath not God first united these kingdoms, both in language and religion and similitude of manners? Hath he not made us all in one island, compassed by one sea, King James of Scotland? Yes, because he has in terms of the crowns, not in terms of the parliaments. King James the First of Scotland was not around in 1707, Sandy. Very important to get that across to you. The Langton I heard is Ochterader, Captain. Ochterader, well, it's certainly Ochterader is a Langton. I can remember the days when you actually drove through Ochterader. It was the main route. I think it would be the original A9, is that right? Uh, the A90 or the A9 going up to uh, through Ochterader 
and there was a lovely, lovely fish and chip shop. And we used to stop. If you're away on a bus trip, youth camps, anything like that, you always stopped to get yourself some fish and chips in Ochterada. Linda Marshall's watching Dinky Doo, do you, Linda Marshall? Lovely to hear from you, I say. What a fabulous discussion tonight. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome to the programme. You're watching Scotty McClue live, broadcasting live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. We've got people watching in Australia, we've got people watching in South America, in Canada, in America, in Russia, China, Japan. Everybody is watching Scotty McClure right now. Sunday nights on uh, British Summertime, 10 o'clock sharp, 2200 hours, 10 o'clock sharp. Be there or be square, I say. Never, ever, ever miss a second of Scotty McClure. You miss a second of Scotty McClure, you miss a moment of life and we're on one hour a week i don't think that's too much to ask this is the way television's going this is the future of broadcasting scotty mcclue is right at the very 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 cutting edge the sharp edge the pointy bit of international media and it's happening right now it's unfolding before your eyes guys so remember this is the biggest thing since marconi Put the airwaves to use. Drop the handkerchief. His pal dropped the handkerchief. Uh, so there we are. Um, Sandy's talking about stuff. Sandy, you need to drop the attitude and say that your mob have gone now. So you are effectively rudderless. You're wandering about in the wilderness now. A clever man like you, Sandy, regardless of your politics, a clever man like you should not be wandering in the wilderness. So get on board. And I think every party in the Scottish Parliament should back independence for Scotland because it makes economic sense and it makes common sense. Very, very important. Right. Big linoleum manufacturers in the land tune, says Rudy Sack. I think you're talking about the lang tune, Rudy. So is that a typo? You tell me. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Also, we've been looking at Brexit. Have we put the cart before the horse? Should we have triggered IndyRef 2 and got the results back for that before we triggered Article 50 for the UK to leave the EU? Because now we don't know who's leaving and who's staying. So there we are. Because Scotland will probably just go independent and uh, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, Sandy, how did your team do today? Says George Mullen. <laughs> yes, Lang, a typo, says Rudy. So, Kirkcaldy in Fife is the Lang tune. Uh, tank left at four, George, says Sandy. Oh, tut, 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 tut. the football. These guys are talking about the football now. Uh, one last share point, very important. Can everybody share this video? Share, 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 share. And this week there may well be three videos flying around for this actual show. So show number 28, you will have part one and part two. Also, there may well be a third show flying about because I've got two systems running. So we'll have to see what's actually happened with that. We'll have to see what is what. Um, and it'll be a slightly different camera angle. So we'll see what's happening there as well. Dave Hemsley and two others have shared the video. Thank you very much. Tremendous. Can everybody else share, 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 share. Tell everyone about this program because virtually every day in the Western world is on Facebook now. So there's no reason for us not to have a massive, massive, massive global audience every Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp. If we can build our audience up, we can look at bringing on more programming for you. All right? So I'd be quite happy to do that. And uh, also, if you can go fund me. <clears throat> now, take this seriously. Don't just go, ah, how is it? It's getting nothing out of me. Please, 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 I beg of you. And McClure doesn't often beg, but I beg of you, I shouldn't have to, for goodness sake, that you stick a couple of quid in to go fund me. If everybody does it, we will grow that fund, 
right? And the rate is moving at the moment, it'll take over 100 years to reach target of £5 million. So I would rather 5 million of you stuck £1 in tonight, and then we will reach our target. And we will do it, folks. We definitely will. One of your shows is down, says Gordon Sterling. So there we are. Yes, uh, one of our ships is missing. Just be careful of taxation, man, Scotty. Sean, no problem at all. I've always been absolutely 100% on the level with all these things. So that's what will happen. Uh, Scotland was scaremongered into voting no, says George. They were, George. Yes, hope over fear and, uh, you know, sending up former senior um, politicians, ex-prime ministers, all that sort of stuff, shouting and bawling the odds, a lot of nonsense. So they are worst thing that happened. But of course, the punishment, <coughs> do beg your pardon there, I shall have a sip of water. There we are. Cheers, love to see you. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Marvellous stuff. Ah, as Rhett say in China, uh, Borox, yes, absolutely. Well, I would say, Han Hao, Ni Hao, if you are watching in China. Uh, so, what are you talking about, Sandy? Scotty, the SNP let 60 year old people going to work in the buses on for nothing, while 59 year old unemployed people have to pay. Well, if you're unemployed at 59, then, um, you know, it depends if your journey is essential. If you're going to work, then I think probably there will be um, all sorts of possibilities, Sandy. So look into it properly and don't snipe too much from the sidelines. Start to say to yourself, hang on a minute, you can't actually get a piece of thin card between what was the old Labour Party long before New Labour came on. I mean, remember your lot really messed up in the 1st of May 1997. But you'd been kind of teetering on the brink since John Smith passed away, Sandy. So let's have the facts there. But um, instead of sniping from the sidelines, I think you should uh, start uh, seriously supporting the, the leading party. Uh, hello from Tel Aviv in Israel, from Elliot and Lewis. Hi, Louis, to my, my dear friends, the Fabers who are in Tel Aviv in Israel. Dinky do to you guys. I hope you are having a lovely time and uh, i keep saying it nobody wants to hear it but the vote was rigged audio and video evidence shows it says dan mcwilliams well dan i never like to uh, doubt people completely and i never like to go too far into the conspiratorial so what we've got to make sure is that there's no hanky panky no skullduggery in india f2 and if the media are going to be biased they need to butt out we need to get our media sorted so the powers that be need to be speaking to me very very soon i say you can't use the bus pass until 9 a.m says eddie Dobley senior there you go sandy you see you're uh, watched on here nonsense scotty Free travel for 60 plus while unemployed 59 year olds pay. Well, if you're 60 plus, then there's a chance you're retired. So it's a good thing that you can get uh, cheap or get free on the buses. An age limit has to be set, Sandy, says Rudy Sachs. So what are you wanting, Sandy? Are you wanting free travel for all unemployed? Is that what you're saying? Because uh, your lot were in for how many years was it? How many years did we have your mob in for? And they never came up with it interesting uh not if you're on pit or isa you can get a bus pass says angie thompson there you go sandy if you're unemployed and you're on pip or isa you can get yourself a bus pass so you can relax and chill old la and uh scotty i've been many times in polling stations digging deep now mm. scotland can't afford to go independent snp can't deliver the promises First time they tried for independence, they relied on the oil industry. Look what happened to the offshore industry they relied on. Sean, get this into your head. Let's have the facts here. No, 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 no. Scotland can't afford not to go independent, right? Scotland sends £40 billion a year to Westminster and gets a tiny bit of that back. 
So it's like giving your ma all your wages, and she gives you back your beer money. That's called the Barnet Formula. The BBC takes £325 million a year out of Scotland, right? It takes 9% of the licence fee and delivers back 3% on programming. These are only two tiny examples. Oil is only about 8 or 9% of the whole Scottish thing. But still the oil is flowing and there are new fines all the time and the price is on its way back up. All right? So Scotland can definitely afford to go independent. I can tell you that now, free gratis and for nothing. Whether they do or not is another discussion, but they can certainly afford to and they can't really afford not to go independent. Okay? Very, very important. So right now, Scotland's not independent, and you've got children starving. You've got food banks. So don't talk to me about affordability. Um, Sandy Howden says, it was Labour who introduced it, Scotty. Catch up. Yes, that's a long, long, long time ago. Why does the gov Scottish government shut down the BBC, says Willie? I think you mean not shut down the BBC. Why does the Scottish government not shut down the BBC? The Scottish government at the moment does not have the authority over broadcasting, Willie. So they need to see to that very, very quickly. It's a very pivotal and important thing. And all broadcasting in Scotland, Scottish broadcast companies, should really be regulated from Edinburgh from Hollywood and uh, they should have uh, the say so over what broadcasts in Scotland. NDRF bores half your audience, Scotty, says Lynn Kay. No, no, we're just mentioning it, Lynn. Uh, compassionate labour for the poor. Joanne Lamont advised us all that we must stop this something for nothing society, says Rudy Zek. Um, I have to say, if I'd been leading the Labour Party at the time, I would have got in touch with uh, whoever was the leader. I can't remember because they changed them around so often. Whoever was the leader at the time in London said, listen, bud, I'm doing something very politically, uh, very political. I'm on, you're on your own. We're going separate in Scotland and we're going to back independence. Ooh, you'd have had a different story there. Uh, what about fracking in Scotland? Will it change the oil prices? Well, who knows? Scott, are you going to sing? If so, hurry. The number two bus is due in Shettleston. I'll throw myself under it, says George Mullen. <clears throat> George, I would never, ever, ever have it that you did not enjoy my singing. So pin back your lugs. Here we go. I have to go. Thanks, guys, for a brilliant, brilliant program tonight. Tremendous stuff. We are on the march. Building, 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 building the people's program just for you. Go fund me and let's do it. Right. Are you ready, George? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of wheat or zain, or of war and a cheerio. Cheerio, my loves. Dinky doo. Have a great week. Scotty McClue has left the building. <laughs>